The Old Testament reading today comes from Genesis chapter 2, verse 4 through 9. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground, but a stream would rise from the earth, and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Gospel reading today comes from Luke chapter 2, verse 7. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God of unending surprises, this life is a tapestry of moments woven together and we long to be weavers of love. Today we gather and pray that you would unravel our bias, unravel our assumptions, unravel whatever it is that keeps us from you. And as you do, clear space in our hearts for your word. We are listening. We are praying. And may it be so. Amen. She wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger. I bet you have never heard those words read in a month other than December. During our Lenten sermon series called The Fabric of Our Faith, we're gonna consider a variety of cloths mentioned in the Gospels, not just to appreciate the fabrics themselves, but to see how those particular threads woven together can point us beyond the fabric to reveal something about God. So I hope that this season will provide a chance for all of us to reweave our faith, making us stronger and more durable for whatever life holds in the weeks and years ahead. In this first week of the series, these bands of cloth point to a loving creator who thirsts for justice and grace and love and who has always been a hands-on, fully present, sacrificial God. She wrapped him in bands of cloth. Some versions, you know, will say she wrapped him in swaddling cloths. And I admit that when I was a youngster, I suppose that this term swaddling cloth or bands of cloth was just another weird Bible word as unfamiliar to me as were myrrh or frankincense. But when my firstborn had his firstborn, that term swaddling cloth took on a fresh new meaning. Swaddling cloths were back in style. And I had to be taught by my firstborn how to wrap our little Tennyson in a snug little band of cloth. Talking with Louisa this week, she admitted that when Hugh and Pip were born, it was her pediatrician dad who was the swaddling expert. And Gary and Missy have confirmed that they've spent this week swaddling little James Michael. In the ancient world, just as today, binding cloth around a child's body snugly was intended to help them feel secure and to keep them warm. Who knew that tightly wrapping an infant in swaddling cloth in 2020 
is really a throwback to the conventional wisdom of thousands and thousands of years ago. And holding that newborn, is that just a, such a sacred moment? Ima imagining the miracle of birth and then dreaming about what the future holds for that little child? Our Advent hymns and carols remind us of the hopes that were held for the newborn Jesus. Come, thou long-expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. I wonder, as Mary wrapped her newborn in bands of cloth, what were her dreams for that child? Just last Sunday, we prayed in worship for the safe arrival of little baby James. And not only did his parents and sisters and grandparents and aunts and uncles long for his arrival, but this entire congregation was eagerly waiting all during Sunday afternoon to hear the news that he had been born. The ancient children of Israel, the Jews, had longed for waited and prayed for and watched for the arrival of the promised Messiah for centuries, for the coming of Emmanuel, God with us. And we know that Mary was aware of that promised Messiah. We know that because Luke's gospel includes what we call the Magnificat, the song that Mary lifted up in thanksgiving for what God was doing. She believed that her pregnancy was grounded in the faithfulness of God. Through her, God would fulfill that ancient promise of the long hoped for Messiah. And she wrapped him in bands of cloth. Don't you wonder if anyone ever could have imagined God sending the Messiah in such a normal fashion? Scholars suggest that Luke includes the details of swaddling bands to highlight the commonness of this child. Jesus was like any other baby born in that region, any other baby born still today, like the infant on the front cover of your bulletin, the little child that was born in Uganda and named Cage or probably KG, delivered by an Army Reserve medic from Lubbock, Texas. The Messiah entered this world like all of us, frail and helpless and vulnerable. And so, of course, he would have been swaddled in bands of cloth. However, this baby was unlike us also. Not only did family and friends await his birth, but generations and generations of an entire people longed for his birth. Luke's gospel also tells us of an elderly Jewish man named Simeon who longed for the birth of the Messiah. Luke's scripture says that the Holy Spirit was upon Simeon and had revealed to him that he wouldn't die until he had seen the Messiah. And so, when Mary and Joseph head to the temple with the newborn Jesus, Simeon is there and he sees them. And the Spirit prompts him to go to them, to take the baby in his arm. And he says, Lord, you are now dismissing your servant in peace. I can die in peace. I've seen the Messiah. He says, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. Simeon also spoke words to Mary that day, words that were much more ominous. This child, he said, is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and a sword shall pierce your own soul too. The hopes for this newborn Jesus were not just that he would carry on the family name or the family business, but that his living would bring justice for the oppressed and poor, freedom for the captive, 
and hope for all of us who sit in darkness. Reverend Phillips Brooks captured those longings in his carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. The hopes and fears of all the years, all the years, are met in thee tonight. Those bands of swaddling cloth held an infant, like us in many ways, yet unlike any child ever born. A child who carries the name Emmanuel, God with us, one who will save us. As the Apostle Paul writes, a child born to die for us. In his letter to the Philippians, Paul writes, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. It said that he emptied himself, not by subtraction of divinity, but by addition of humanity. And in January, Pastor Louisa reminded us that John, who was Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist, spent his lifetime pointing, pointing to Jesus. And so too, these ordinary cloths point beyond our memories of our children or our own grandchildren. They point beyond the hopes of providing a newborn with security and a good night's rest. These cloths point us toward an amazing, sacrificial love of God for this world. They also foretell the other cloths that will be wrapped around the body of Jesus as he's laid in the tomb. These bands point us to the amazing love of Christ for us, and they point to a loving God, a creator who has, as we heard in the Old Testament reading, he's always been a hands-on, fully present God, the God who walked in the garden, knelt down in the dirt, fashioned a body, and then breathed life into the nostrils, the breath of the Holy One in us, the God who dreamed of redeeming and restoring the creation. And these bands of cloth point to our Creator who was ultimately willing to enter into our frail, human, vulnerable state to do just that. All because of love. Amen.